morning. Good to see you all this morning. Welcome to Palestine United Methodist Church. We're glad you could join us on Facebook Live, and we're glad that we got all these people right here with us this morning, too. Robert, it's good to see you. Glad you're back today. Um, announcements are here in the bulletin. And Wednesday, 6.30, we are in a study by Max Lucado titled Life Lessons from Ezra and Nehemiah. And it's on Facebook Live, and that's Wednesday at 6.30 each week. Um, and then we've been trying to have coffee time at 8.15 on Sunday mornings and distancing and mask optional for that. And we had some good coffee this morning made by Casey. Homecoming is September 12th, 11 a.m., and still kind of up in the air on that, but probably going to do what we did last year and not have a meal because of the cases that are rising. And in, one, in, in less than a week, we've gone over 100 cases just in Robertson County, 100 new cases, so that has bumped it up to there are about 200 well, it was 217 active cases in Robertson County this past Friday, and that would be for Thursday's total. So, um, you know, it's nothing to nothing to ignore, and I think that we'd be good just to kind of be aware of the surrounding, be be aware, be aware of the situation going on around us. Um, at the same time, we are now going, Matt, we're still going to be mask optional, but it's mask preferred. And some of that is just to be prepared for what's to come, if it comes. You know, it's not easy for any of us, and we don't like it, but that's just kind of the way it is. Uh, charge conference is November 14th, and that'll be at 5 p.m. at Greenbrier United Methodist Church. And they're going to do a cluster, so there'll be Robertson County Churches at Greenbrier United Methodist. And um, we'll just kind of monitor the COVID situation and let y'all know what will be going on. Are there any other announcements? It's gotten a little warmer. Yeah, that's, a, that's an announcement, all right. <laughs> What'd you, what'd you say? She said it's supposed to rain this week. Supposed to rain this week, that's right, that's right. All right, well, let's join in the opening prayer together. Father, we welcome your presence with us this morning. We are in need of being filled, refreshed, and renewed by your spirit with us. We need your guidance, nurturing love, and forgiveness today. We need you with us to remind us of who you are and who we are. So, Father, fill us during our time this morning and lead us to help us walk in your footsteps so that we may glorify you each and every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you will, turn to page 848 in your hymnal. And... Um, our call to worship is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, that you may be worshipped. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. In the Lord's word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, Hope in the Lord, 
For with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. And the Lord will redeem Israel from all iniquity. Larry's going to come and read the scripture, which is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 through chapter 5, verses 2. Lead us in the Apostles' Creed and the Gloria Patri. Please join me in the scripture reading. Ephesians 4, 25, and we'll go through chapter 5, verse 2. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of, ju of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is a word of God for the people of God. And all the people said, thanks be to God. Please join me on, on the uh, Apostles' Creed, in the Apostles' Creed, page 881 in the hymnals. And stand as you're able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence has come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And please join me in reciting the words of uh, Gloria Patri in your bulletin. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Prayer concerns are on the back of the bulletin. I need to add Peggy Stallings, a friend of Daryl's. Lizzie Smith, who has lost, what, about 50 pounds? She um, was weighing 130 and is now like 180. And she's sister of Tiny Mendenhall. Uh, Tim Robertson, who has COVID, and Sharon said just really need prayers for Tim, but um, talked to, well, texted last night, and he's doing pretty good. He's just feeling very, very, very tired, and so he's not having any coughing or a lot of that stuff at this point, and we hope that he doesn't. Don Lyle, who will be having surgery on his back. Joey Jones with liver issues, Lisa Miller-Haynes, 
Um, and Betty, your wife is doing doing much better. Good. We sure are good. We sure are glad. Are there any others that we would like to add or update? Um, I need to talk to them. I've not talked to them, but they've. I, th I think the health. They, they've still got the health issues. Have you talked to Faye Douglas this week by chance? Do we have any joys we'd like to share? Oh, you did? Great grandbaby. That's good. So you got to love and snuggle and hug. Good deal. How, how, how old is she now? A month old. That, mm, that's so sweet. One month old. Anyone else? It's been another great week. Anyone else? I would like to um, do a little update on Clay Wooten, a friend of mine, and um, he's been back at Northcrest and then got him back over to NHC. Wednesday, but he's got what the doctor called an extensive blood clot in his leg, and so that, from what I understand, means that it goes up his entire leg and somewhat into this area. So, um, Clay Wooten, good friend of mine. He's he's my brother. He's my, he's my brother friend. It's that kind of a friendship, and. Um, so, if I could just keep Clay in your prayers, that would be wonderful, and I'd really appreciate it. Any others? Joys or concerns? We, I mean, a joy is that we, we're a week closer to fall, and when the weather gets cooler, we're going to go back outside for morning worship, and that's a joy. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's bow. Father, we thank you so much for, for so many, many things. You give us the air that we breathe, the families that we have. You give us life. And you sent Jesus to help us learn how to live life in the fullest way that we can live it. Continue to help teach us how we are to do this. Continue to Help teach us how we are supposed to love people that don't want to be loved. How we're supposed to hold our tongues when sometimes they just lash out. How we're supposed to be patient with those who aren't patient with us. Father, continue to teach us to be more like you. To love unconditionally. To continue to support when that's the last thing we want to do. Father, keep us near to you. And help keep our focus on you. Father, you have, you have heard the names that have been called out this morning that are on our prayer list. 
You know the things that we hold in our hearts. You know the things that we will never let go of. He even asks your help with. Help us, Father, to lift all these things to you. All these people, all these cares, all these concerns, and all of our worries. All of our relationships. Help us lift all those things and place them in your arms. Where we know that in your arms, they will be made right. They will be made whole. And there, there will be healing. And I ask all this in Christ's name, who taught his disciples to pray most perfectly. By saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lectionary text this morning is kind of jumbled up, so I'm just going to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to read 2 Samuel chapter 18, verses 5 through 15, and then verses 33, I'm sorry, 31 through 33. So that's 2 Samuel chapter 18, verses 5 through 15, and then verses 31 through 33. The king ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave the orders to the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel were defeated there, and the servants of David And the slaughter there was great on that day. 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country. And the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding his mule. And the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak. And he was left hanging between heaven and earth. While the mule that was under him went on, a man saw it and told Joab, I saw Absalom Absalom hanging in an oak. 
Joab said to the man who told him, What? You saw him? Why then did you not strike him there on the ground, or to the ground? I would have been glad to give you ten pieces of silver and a belt. But the man said to Joab, Even if I felt in my hand the weight of a thousand pieces of silver, I would not raise my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing the king commanded you and Abishai and Ittai, saying, For my sake, protect the young Absalom. On the other hand, if I had dealt treacherously against his life, and there is nothing hidden from the king, then you yourself would have stood aloof, aloof. Joab said, I will not waste time like this with you. He took three spears in his hand and thrust them into the heart of Absalom while he was still alive in the oak. And ten young men, Joab's armor bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good tidings from my lord the king. For the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, it is, well with the, is, is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to do you harm be like that young man. King was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, would I had died instead of you. O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Goodness. Families are strange things, aren't they? It was an elderly man who had some serious hearing problems. And he had had these hearing problems for quite a few years. So his family had constantly urged him to go do something about it. Go get him a hearing aid. He kept saying, no, we're not going to fool with it right now. You know, I, I, it's fine. So, finally, he decided, you know, I'm just going to go on and, and go. So he went to the doctor, and he got this new pair of hearing aids that will let you hear 100% of what's being said. Well, he didn't mention it to his family that he had gone to the doctor. So, Family would come in, and he wouldn't make, make a mention of it. So a while later, he had to go back to the doctor, and the doctor said, so how's the hearing aids working? He said, great. I bet your family is really excited about it. He said, oh, I haven't said anything to my family about it. He said, you haven't? No, I just go in and sit and listen to the conversation. He said, Really? He said, yep. He said, I've changed my will three times already. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, Daryl was playing a song kind of like that this morning. What was the name of that song? Yeah, I don't like half the folks I love. That kind of comes along with the scripture. Oh, goodness. The story of, just the story of David and his third son, because Absalom was his third son. That goes on for about six chapters in, Sam, in 2 Samuel. So if you want to read the full account, have at it. It's very interesting. Very interesting. I don't see anything like that happening today because that would, that just wouldn't happen today. Ammon was David's firstborn son. <coughs> Absalom was the third. 
So the story started actually when Amon, David's firstborn son, raped his half-sister. And that just sounds crazy. You know, that we would, I mean, come on. But it happened. And being as how Amon was David's firstborn son, David did absolutely nothing to punish Amon for what he had done to his sister. Nothing. Well, Absalom, on the other hand, he took, I mean, he took matters into his own hands. You know, if, if dad ain't going to do nothing, this guy's going to pay for what he's done to my sister, Tamar. So he killed her. So then Absalom had to go into exile. He was there for three years. And David got word that caused him to say, you know, it's probably time for Absalom to come on back home. So Absalom comes back home. But he is still so full of resentment and anger toward his daddy that he starts telling people, you know, I could be a much better king than the one you have. Just... Just believe me, I'd be a much better king than what y'all got. So after a few years, probably three or four years of political bantering and campaigning back and forth, Absalom decides to go to Hebron, which was the first capital that David actually had. While he was there, he raised an army up against his daddy. Such a sweet young man, don't you think? So, when that happened, and the army went after King David, David had to retreat across the Jordan River. Absalom wanted to show his power so badly that he publicly raped some of David's wives. Apparently that was the way that could really humiliate and also show how much power you had back in the day. So this is kind of where the scripture I read today picks up. So you got the background kind of laid out in your mind. So David's army and Absalom's army are about to have what, would, what we would probably call shootout at the OK Corral. David is urged by his officers not to go into battle because if something happened to him and he died, then there would just be chaos in the kingdom. So David said, well, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'll just stay here with my feet propped up and y'all can go on out and fight in a battle for me. But before he left, before they left, he told his commanding officers, listen, Joab is one of them, said, listen, don't let anything happen to my son Absalom. And he said that where anyone within public hearing of him heard the outcry. So, 
So, Absalom riding his mule, going through the forest, big oak tree, gets his head stuck. Actually, I think it was his hair that got stuck because Absalom was really a handsome young man, and he was very proud of the locks of hair that he had. But anyway, that left him dangling from that oak tree. So one of Joab's soldiers sees what's going on, and instead of killing him, he goes and he tells Joab. He says, you know what? I ain't about to get in that hootenanny. You know, because Joab's upset with him. You know, why didn't you go ahead and kill him? I'm not going to get in that hootenanny. So Joab takes three spears and thrust them into the heart of Absalom. At that point, ten of his own soldiers come up and surround Absalom, and they put their spears into him so that nobody would really know who killed Absalom. And it would not be reported back to David that Joab had been the one that did it. So then they removed the body. They either dug a hole or there was one there. They put it in there. They covered it with stones to keep any scavengers away. And they performed what was not the custom burial for the king's son. So then Joab sent a Cushite messenger to tell David what had happened. But another messenger outran him, told him all the good stuff that they'd won the battle but left out the part about his son. The other messenger finally gets there, and he's the one that bears the bad news about Absalom. So then we hear that David is in mourning, and he's going to his chamber, and as he's walking away, and I'm sure this was not quietly whispered, just going on, you know, how David is. Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son. Oh, that I would have died in your place, basically is what he said. And that's where the story ends. Oh, what tangled webs we weave when we practice to deceive. Oh, my grandmother would tell me that all the time till I finally got it memorized and understood what it meant. And then I was like, sure, you can put my Barbie doll anytime you want to. <laughs> As a good parent, David probably should have disciplined Amron when he killed his half-sister. I'm just, I'm just saying. Maybe that would have had an effect on Absalom. Maybe Absalom wouldn't have been as violent as he was. Maybe he wouldn't have fallen into the trap of sexual violence. Maybe Absalom wouldn't have come back. or Maybe he wouldn't have ever had, ever had to leave. There's a whole lot of stuff. A whole lot of stuff. Of what ifs. And all the webs that were woven through all of that. Because remember, uh, you know, Joab showed up before in David's life. Y'all think about that a minute. Joab showed up earlier in David's life. But we hear all of this stuff. And we think, man, what a dysfunctional family David had. And it would probably do us very good not to get too self-righteous about it. I'm just saying. 
because this is our family too. We come from the line of David. So these are our ancestors that are acting this way. One of our own ancestors killed his half-sister. I mean, I'm sorry, raped his half-sister, and then his brother killed him. What? And I mean, just to be honest about it, I dare say there is... Not a one of us that is at some point in our lives has weaved some tangled webs. Oh, we don't want to admit it because we want everybody to think we are great. And we are good. But we've probably done that with relative, with either relatives, friends. Teachers, come on now, think about it. When you're growing up, teachers, coaches. Church members. We may not have actually stabbed anyone physically in the heart, but these sharp tongues that we have, especially mine. I've probably physically, emotionally hurt someone else. If not that, then maybe our actions, maybe our anger and resentments, because tell you the truth, 99% of what we do comes from some sort of anger or resentment that we've already got inside of us that doesn't have anything to do with what is facing us at that moment. That's right. We all have our own unresolved issues just like Absalom had. He was angry with his father. And who wouldn't be? You know, you're angry with your dad because he's done nothing about this brother that's raped your sister. I mean, I don't... He let him go scot-free. That would make me upset. And you know, we really shouldn't let David off so fast either. You remember in the scripture where he's talking about be gentle, be kind, watch out for my son Absalom. He wanted to shout that so everybody could hear him say that he was so concerned about him because he wasn't going in battle himself. You know. Mm -mm. Did he do that because maybe he had put a hit on his own son's life? You know? Could it be that David actually saw his son Absalom as an opponent or an enemy? He knew that David was going to try to take over his kingdom. He knew that David had been out campaigning against him. It would kind of be a natural thing. And remember, Joab is the very leader of the army that David called on when he had to have Bathsheba. And he couldn't have her till her husband was dead. Joab is the one that pierced Absalom's heart 
with the spears. Of course, then David has to go and be drama king to say, oh, oh, my son, my son, my son, Absalom. How it would have been better if I would died instead of you. And here again, he's going to let everybody hear him. I'm just saying. Now, we, we don't know. Y'all are sitting there thinking, yeah, and I came to church today because I wanted to feel much better about myself. I want to feel better about the world and all these situations. And this is what I get to hear about. You know, I have discovered that if we don't hear the bad stuff, how are we going to fix it? How are we going to let the stuff go, the resentments and things that we hold on to? How are we going to do that if we're not reminded that we have them? You know, it's kind of like Uncle Gary says, it depends on what side of the mop flops. And that can be our attitude depending on how we wake up every single morning. Are we going to be this way or are we going to be that way? Wasn't it the purpose of Christ coming to this earth and being raised up on a tree to lift us up? Wasn't that his purpose? To let us know that we did have life and we could have it abundantly. But we need to let some stuff go. There's only one way that I know that we can fix our dysfunctions. And it's all in how we use forgiveness and reconciliation. And it's all in how we use those to break the change of dysfunction that hold on to us so tightly. Larry read Ephesians 5, that portion, chapter 5, 1 through 2. <clears throat> I'm going to read it from the message. Watch what God does. And then you do it, like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. Christ came to bring healing and wholeness and to teach us that there's no sin too large that can't be forgiven and there's no one, no one out of his reach that can't be loved. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Thank you for being with us on Facebook Live today. We hope you have a wonderful week, and just know that there are people in this church who send their love and their hugs to each and every one of you. Now we'll receive the benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen.